Hello, my name is Stephen Hustedi, and I'd like to welcome you to CIS 165, an introduction to iOS programming. You've taken a look at the syllabus, and you've seen there are several competencies that our district says you will learn in this course. And some of those are a little bit outdated. I prefer to work with course-level outcomes, which are more of the umbrella statement that encompasses those competencies. So there are three things that you should be getting out of this course at the end. You should be able to explain the tools, the processes, and the procedures for creating basic iOS applications. We're going to be using Xcode as our environment to develop these, and so you're going to be able to create interfaces using what we call storyboards in Xcode. And then thirdly, in the past, Objective-C has been the language that we've used to create iOS apps. And Apple recently announced the new language called Swift, which is a little more modern and a little bit easier to use. And so rather than focusing on Objective-C, we're going to focus on this new Swift language to put you at the cutting edge. The goal of this course is simply to give you a great foundation for building iOS apps using these tools. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a Mac. And to develop iOS applications, it has to be done on a Macintosh. We're going to run a environment called Xcode. This is our development environment, or IDE, Integrated Development Environment. And Xcode 6 is the most recent version that, and the one that introduces the Swift language. So in order to program in Swift, you've got to run Xcode 6. And in order to run Xcode 6, your Mac has to be running 10.95 Mavericks OS or 10.10 .10 Yosemite OS. And you can probably upgrade your Mac if you're shy of those. And then finally, if you want to create an app and put it up on the store for either free or to sell it, or you want to deploy something you create on your own device or somebody else's device, cabled to your development machine, you would need to join the iOS developer program. And that's going to cost you $99 a year. That is not a requirement for this course. You're going to be able to test all your apps on the Mac itself using the simulators that are available through Xcode 6. Let's talk a little bit about the iPhone history. On January 9th of 2007, Steve Jobs changed the world by introducing the iPhone at Macworld and said it would be available in June. So the first iPhone was, the resolution was 480 by 320. It was a three and a half inch screen. It included an ambient light meter, an accelerometer, proximity in, in the, that sense that the phone dims when it gets close to your face, so you're taking a phone call. And then finally, it offered Bluetooth connectivity. A year later, in 2008, they introduced the 3G iPhone. And that provided a GPS and provided the ability for third-party apps through the App Store. Prior to this, the iPhone came with apps that Apple created and made available. Now this opened up the creation of apps for this device to the world. And the cottage industry, actually a huge industry, was created to build iPhone apps. A year later, they introduced the iPhone 3GS. And here the resolution went up to 960 by 640. It included a compass and the ability to not only record from, with the camera, but to also use video recording. About a year later, 2010, the iPhone 4 came out introduced a gyroscope, a forward-facing camera, great for things like FaceTime, and an LED flash for taking photos. A little more than a year later, we had the iPhone 4S introduce infrared and a really cool app called Siri in which you could ask questions, voice recognition, and Siri would, would try to find information for you. Another year later, roughly, iPhone 5 came out, introduced a 4-inch screen, by the way, with iPhone 4S, the screen was 1136 by 640. Then the iPhone 5C and 5S came out in 2013, introduced a fingerprint reader, and then most recently in 2014 with the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, two resolutions there, 1334 by 760 and 1920 by 1080 full HD TV capabilities, 4.7 and 5.5 inches respectively. So you can see looking at the different iPhones, there's different sizes and that's one of the challenges as, as a designer, is which phone are you going to develop for, or do you want to develop for all of them? And that would be considered a universal app. Well, then to complicate matters, they introduced another device in 2010. That was the iPad. 
The iPad was 1024 by 768 and used the same operating system. It included a light sensor, accelerometer, compass, and Bluetooth. It was improved with the iPad 2. It had front and rear facing cameras and a gyroscope. And then the iPad 3, further resolution with the retina display. Very sharp, high resolution display. But notice the resolution there, 2048 by 1536. Further muddying the waters in terms of how do you design apps for these devices. The iPad 4 came out a little bit later, introduced I, the iOS 6, and then the iPad mini, which was a 7.9 inch screen, whereas the iPad had a 9.7. A little bit smaller screen, 1024 by 768, went back to that, but then later introduced a retina display, along with the iPad Air, introducing iOS 7, and the retina display for iPad mini took it to 2048 by 1536, the same as the iPad 3. What's coming up? Well, Apple's announced the Apple Watch, which will tie into an iPhone and provide another way of accessing apps on a person's iPhone. The Apple App Store revolutionized programming. It provided ways for people to develop apps for these devices and deploy them, making every person who has an iPhone or an iPad available to purchase their app or to download their app for free. It created a huge industry. In 2014, there were $10 billion in app sales. Through 2010 and 2014, the lifespan of the iPhone devices, $25 billion total. Lots of money was made there. Some people became millionaires overnight. I'm sorry to say those days are largely over, but people still make a, a decent living sometimes developing apps for these devices. Apple's developer website, developer.apple.com, is where you can download Xcode if you don't already have that on your on your computer. You can also access information about the App Store and information on iOS 8 and OS X. The developer library is also available at that site and there are lots of great reference materials here that you'll want to familiarize yourself with. One in particular is the human iOS human interface guidelines. This explains kind of the rules and the standards for creating apps for iOS, including the iPhone, iPad, and, I, and iPod Touch. And if you want to sign up for the iOS developer program, again, that's optional for this course, $99 a year, it's an annual fee, you can do that also at developer.apple.com. I mentioned we'll be using Swift as our programming language. In the past, iOS apps have always been created with Objective-C. Objective-C is still available, so we can create any apps using Objective-C. We're going to focus on using Swift. You can even create apps that would use both languages together. Now, in using Swift, there's still a lot of API calls and so forth that are done in Objective-C. So we're not going to necessarily be doing any programming in Objective-C, but we will be calling a lot of Objective-C modules and APIs and method calls and so forth. And so we're using Objective-C because a lot of that is built into the iOS already. But we're going to be focusing on using Swift for our programming language. With that, I hope you're going to enjoy this course and develop some great skills. Maybe you'll make that million dollar app. So let's get into doing some development and some programming.